Hi there YouTube and welcome to Tech Cravers. Valve has increased the production of their handheld PC Steam Deck and more and more of you are getting your hands on it by the day. Some of you might just have heard about it though and want to know more about it or if it's worth the wait and money to grab one for yourself. I ordered the middle version or the 256GB model of Steam Deck about a few hours or so after pre-sale started about a year ago and was placed in the Q2 2022 line. I got my device in early May and since then it's rarely been a day that I haven't played or tinkered with it. Some of the results of that you may have already seen among my other videos. And speaking of which, before I proceed with this one, please let me take this opportunity to thank all 2,700 of you that has decided to subscribe to my channel since I started with this in February. And to all other who haven't subscribed yet, but that take your time to comment and engage with my videos, or even better, helps answering each other in the comment section. Words cannot express how much you mean to me and this channel. I'm a working father of two, so time isn't exactly my biggest currency. So once again, thank you. Now, as I have already said, I've had my Steam Deck for about 3 months now, and this is my review. The initial impression that will hit you right in the face as you grab it out of its box, no matter how many videos you have watched of this device, is the sheer size of it. The Steam Deck is big, bigger than any handheld you have used before. Hear me out though, that won't stop it from being ergonomic. It's relatively lightweight and lays perfect in your hands, so in other words, don't let the size scare you from getting one of your own. Now, depending on which model you decide to go for, you might or might not have the anti-glare screen. The model with 512GB SSD comes with the anti-glare screen and it's also why I personally grabbed the middle model with 256GB of internal storage and no anti-glare screen. I usually don't like anti-glare screens, especially not for indoor use, which I figured would be my main use for the Steam Deck, so I didn't want to have that screen forced on me. With that said, however, I have been using my Steam Deck outside sometimes this summer, mostly because I wanted to test it in those environments as well, and I have been using an anti-glare screen protector for the sake of it. The screen protector cost me $9 on eBay in contrast to the extra $120 that Valve wanted for the model with anti-glare. You do of course also get more internal storage, but SD cards have been proven to not reduce game performance and I'm using a 1TB card from Kioxia myself, so that wasn't really important to me. Apart from the size and the screen, your initial thought would probably be, as I mentioned, that it feels very nice in your hands. Now depending a little on what size your hands are, of course, you will have no problems reaching any of the buttons. Everything seems strategically placed and even the buttons on the back that you actually have under your grip won't be accidentally pressed unless you mean to do so. So in short, I'm overall impressed by the build and controller layout, however, it can be a bit slippery when holding it and the last thing you want to do is drop your new device that you have been waiting months for on the floor. So I can recommend getting some universal grip tape or even a protective rubber case should you be the clumsy type. There might be a number of reasons for you to get a Steam Deck. Some of you will use it for AAA gaming, while others will finish off that backlog of indie games that you've been having in your Steam library for the last decade. Heck, some of you might even be in desktop mode for creative stuff like writing and painting. I'm the all-eater type of guy myself, and even if I have played my share of God of War and other amazing AAA games, it has primarily been an emulation monster machine in my possession, playing everything from 80s NES to the more modern Wii U, PS3 and even Nintendo Switch games. The absolute first game I played, however, was none other than Valve's own Aperture Desktop. This is a game that Valve made entirely to show the various buttons and functions of your Steam Deck. It's free, and even if you absolutely can play it on your PC, you should know that it's 100% designed to be played on the Steam Deck. It's a very short game, but it's really funny and lovable. And as you might know, it takes place in the much-loved Portal universe, and it's definitely my top recommendation before you play anything else. But as I mentioned, I have been using my Steam Deck as my main emulation handheld, and it's been nothing but sheer joy to realize how well the Steam Deck plays my backlog of retro game dubs, and even newer game dubs as well. I've been wanting to play Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty HD and Snake Eater HD on the go for long, but of course it couldn't just be done without a gaming laptop, and that's not really on the go if you know what I mean. 
Same thing with a bunch of Wii U classics like Wind Waker HD. Wind Waker is one of my favorite games of all time and to see how well the HD version runs on the Steam Deck is just great. The colors are so vibrant they almost look like they will pop out of my screen. If you don't have any clue on how to get started with emulators and games from the past I recommend that you check out my other videos as I have several up on my channel where I go through how to set up different emulators and systems. Your go-to method should probably be using EmuDeck, which will install all the emulators and even set them up for you. Once the installation is complete, all you have to do is to add your dumped games to the correct folder that EmuDeck has created. But as I said, I have a video tutorial up entirely for that, so go check that out later if you haven't already. Apart from emulation, I have of course also been playing AAA games. And what's nice about Steam OS is that it will actually tell you straight up front if the game you're playing is compatible with the Steam Deck or not. You can also see if the game is playable but with some flaws. These flaws or notes will be listed if you check out the details section of the game. When I started to use my Steam Deck back in May, a lot of games were listed as unknown. But as more time flies, almost every game I check out now has a great playable or unsupported tag next to it. Steam OS will actually ask you sometime if you reckon the game you just played to be great, playable or not playable. So you can help Valve gather this information should you want that. Now, here's the really great stuff. If a game for some reason is marked as unsupported, in this case it's The Curse of Monkey Island, that means the Steam Deck's standard controls won't support that game. However, that doesn't mean someone else haven't made it playable by adding their own controller scheme for you to use instead. So make sure to always check out the Community Layouts tab in the controller settings. Chances are that the game is very much playable, but Valve hasn't figured it out yet. If this isn't crowdsourcing at its best, I don't know what is. For the AAA games I have been playing though, like God of War, almost every single one is marked as great, meaning it has full standard controller support and will be a joy to play on the Steam Deck. Here I am using my Xbox Series X controller though, and that works just as well. So far, the only type of games that I have noticed being a bad experience on the Steam Deck in handheld mode is simulation games like Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster and Cities Skyline, even if they're all listed as playable. Remember though that you can always dock your Steam Deck and play the games on a monitor with keyboard and mouse instead. Even if Valve's official docking station hasn't been released yet, there are several great alternatives out there. Remember not to buy the cheapest dock you can find though, since reports have been made of docks that have bricked Steam Decks. Personally, I use JS Socks updated 2.0 dock at the moment. I have used their earlier version before and it also works great. Now what about battery? This is a handheld device supposed to be taken with you after all. There's actually so much you can say about battery life on Steam Deck that I could easily entitle an entire video for that. However, I won't do that, at least not today. Instead, I will try to summarize my thoughts of it. First of all, I want to point out that never under these months have I ever thought, oh shoot, the battery is dead, now I won't be able to use my Steam Deck. And that's simply because 95% of the time I have been using my Steam Deck inside close to a power outlet. That being said, if battery life is of great importance to you, you will probably end up hating it on the Steam Deck. The biggest reason for that is that it's so hard calculating how much juice a game will drain from the battery. I have been playing games that easily drain the battery from fully charged to 0% in less than an hour. Snake Eater HD for instance, the emulated PS3 game, lasted for 57 minutes before I had to charge my Steam Deck. Other times, with less demanding games and screen brightness turned down, I've had games running for 8 or even 9 hours. On average, I'd say that the battery life lasts for 2 to 3 hours, and I honestly think that's too bad for a device like this. I don't think that poor battery life should stop you from getting a Steam Deck though, since you can always bring a power bank with you. I'm not only a big Steam Deck user, I've always loved handheld consoles, and the Nintendo Switch is no exception. In terms of physical comparison, the Switch almost feels like a Game Boy Advance compared to the Steam Deck. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that the Steam Deck is kind of light despite it being so big, but it has nothing on the Switch. However, I do like the ergonomics of the Steam Deck a lot more than on the Switch. The thumbsticks are like 10 times better for example, and the A, B, X, Y buttons are placed in the correct order on the Steam Deck if you ask me. That is of course up to personal taste. The big grips on the back of the Steam Deck also adds even more in favor of the Steam Deck, since it's more comfortable to play for longer sessions. I can't really compare the Steam Deck to Nintendo Switch without mentioning a quite remarkable thing. 
and that is that the Steam Deck will actually give you a better Breath of the Wild experience than the Nintendo Switch will. That's because with a few tweaks, the Steam Deck can run this game in up to 60 FPS, averaging at 45 FPS, while it's limited to 30 FPS on the Switch, and that is really night and day difference. It's worth noticing though that I'm playing the Wii U version over the CMU emulator to get this performance. And for a quick mobility comparison, I have also my AYN Odin here, which is an Android handheld with capability of playing GameCube, Dreamcast and some PS2 games. Now, of course, the Steam Deck blows this little fella away in terms of emulation power, but for me, this is the best handheld size to bring on the bus, for example, whereas the Steam Deck is simply too big for that. Now, should you buy a Steam Deck or not? There really are so many reasons to get a Steam Deck. The first reason is that it's an extremely mobile PC with 2022 performance that you can get for under $500. No other company in the world can compete with that bang for the buck factor as of today. Now Valve of course sells these at a loss, but expects to collect the money from game sales via Steam instead. The second reason is of course the convenience of being able to pick up a game and play for a few minutes in bed or on the bus or even the toilet. Finally, a way to catch up on the game catalog you've been building up over the years. As a father of small children, this has proven to be a real lifesaver for my gamer self. The last reason is that this is, as of today, the world's number one emulation machine. A few other handheld computers can achieve similar results with, for example, PlayStation 3 and Nintendo Switch, but they usually cost more than twice as much as the Steam Deck. Now, it's important for you to know that despite all the positive words I'm tossing around, the Steam Deck is not a perfect device. There are definitely also room for improvements. For instance, in a future model, I'd love to see an even more compact form factor. I also want to see more energy efficient CPU and GPU so we can get much better battery life. Lastly, Steam OS is Linux based, meaning it's definitely not as simple as Windows or Mac OS. Valve has done a great job with Steam OS and keeps updating it to feel fluent and as console-like as possible, but it will occasionally bug out and also freeze until you reboot your system. That's it for my review of the Steam Deck after having it for almost 3 months now. The short version is that you should definitely buy one even if it's not a perfect device. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, please let me know by giving it a like. Have you got a Steam Deck yourself? What do you think of it? Let me know in a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching through this review, catch you in the next one.